Okay, so the last few days have been on types of segments. We are now going to talk about angles. Okay, so we have two goals for today. I can name and identify angles. And then the second one is I can use the angle addition postulate and the definition of an angle bisector. So we've did segment postulate, or the segment addition postulate. And we've also done segment bisector, but now we're moving on to angles and then find the measure of the given angles. Okay, so first off, Let's talk about angles. So we have to make sure what we know what an angle is because I see improper labeling of angles all the time. So if I were to draw an angle that looks like so, okay, an angle is this measure created by two rays and it can be two line segments also. So that is an angle right there. So if I said label the angle 27 degrees, you're labeling inside, in between the two rays. Do not put 27 degrees out here, meh. Okay, how do we express the measure of angles? We do that in degrees. And later, you'll see that degrees is not, ooh, that doesn't spell degrees. And later you'll see that um, degrees is not the only way, um, but not in this class. Okay, so also when you're naming it, um, when you're actually naming an angle, if, for example, I have drawn up here something that looks like this, and this is A, let's say, and this is B, and that's C, you would put angle first, and then the three points with the vertex in the middle. So the three points with vertex in the middle. Okay, so this particular angle would be angle A, B, C. The vertex right here is B. Okay, if you were saying what the measure was of this angle, once again, we'll say it's 27 degrees, you would say the measure of angle A, B, C is 27 degrees. So if you're talking about how much it is, that's the measure. If you're just talking about the angle, you don't put the M in front. Okay. Looking at this right here, there's three ways that you can lamb an angle if it's just an angle all by itself. Okay, so method one is the method that I just talked about. The angle sign, then the three points, vertex in the middle. Okay. So an example here, ooh, that's not how you spell middle either. Having a hard time spelling today, apparently. You look at this angle right here, there's three points on it, B is the vertex. So you can name this angle ABC, angle ABC, or you could have gone in the opposite direction, you could have said CBA, angle CBA. Okay, so that is the preferred method. This is the one that if you do it, you'll always probably get it correct, okay? Second one is if there is a number inside, notice that one right there is not the measure, it's just labeling it one so I can be like, refer to angle one, right? So if there's a number inside, then you can use angle, then the number inside. So this could be angle one. The third method, which is the least preferred method, which is the angle symbol, then just the vertex. This is, does not always work. Okay, on this particular one, it does work because if I said, if I called it angle B, there's only one angle B in the diagram. Now, if you fast forward here, if you tried calling something angle A, I have no idea what you're talking about because this is, has a vertex of A, this has a vertex of A, and this has a vertex of A. So you cannot call anything angle A in this um, diagram. Next, it says use the diagram to name as many angles as you can, okay? So let's see, first off, how many angles are there? How many angles are there? If you said three, you're correct. So we'll start with this one, which I will highlight in red. Oop, that's an eraser. So this one right here, which I will trace in red, okay? So that is angle M-A-T. You can also call that angle 
T-A-M. Or you can also call that angle. Can you call it angle A? Absolutely not. You can call it angle one though. Okay. All right, moving on to this angle that I'll trace in blue right here. There's three ways to name that angle. Angle T-A-H. I said H and I wrote M. T-A-H. Angle H-A-T. Or it also has a two in there, so angle two. Last but not least, we have one more angle. We have this big angle right here. And there's only two ways to label that angle. You can name that angle M-A-H or angle H-A-M. Okay? Okay. All right, so types of angles, types of angles. There are four different types of angles that we will refer to. Acute angles, straight angles, obtuse angles, and right angles. And these should all sound familiar whenever I teach this in class. Um, I, the, my students give me the definitions of what they are and, and describe what they are. So these are things that you've heard before. All right, so let's start with acute angle. An acute angle is an angle that is less than 90 degrees. Um, it will look like it will have a ray, and then there will be another ray. And if you look at those rays, it is less than 90 degrees. So it looks less than um, uh, a capital letter L, smaller than, more, more um, pushed down. A straight angle is 180 degrees. So it is equal to 180 degrees. So right here, this angle that I just made, so if you look right here, there's the vertex and here's two points, is 180 degrees. So this angle right here is 180 degrees. It's a straight angle. Obtuse angle is an angle that is more than 90 degrees, but less than 180. Okay, so to draw an obtuse angle here, I still start with a horizontal ray, but instead of going less than or going straight up, which would make 90, I'm gonna go more than that. So this right here is an example of an obtuse angle. Last but not least, we have a right angle. A right angle is exactly 90 degrees. So when I draw my horizontal line right here, I'm gonna go straight up, and now I have a 90 degree angle, but this is not good enough. I don't, I, maybe it's 89, I can't tell by looking. So you have to make sure people know it's 90 degrees. To show that it's 90 degrees, what we do is we put a little box right here, and that means now that it's 90 degrees, okay? All right, the angle addition postulate is what we're gonna talk about next, okay? It's very similar to the segment addition postulate. So if you recall from last week, the segment addition postulate said that if B was in between A and C, that this piece, AB, plus this piece, BC, is equal to the whole thing, which is AC. The segment addition postulate works the same way, so I can give you a generic example. If I said this angle is 30 degrees and this angle is 20 degrees, what's this angle? 50 degrees. And the reason why is because this angle right here, angle, the measure of angle ABD, plus this angle right here, the measure of angle DBC, is equal to both of those angles added up, the whole thing, angle ABC. And that's the angle addition postulate. Sometimes it's super easy where it's like, this is, this is 30, this is 20, what's the whole thing? Um, or even same idea with the easiness, this is 30, this is 100, the whole thing's 100, what's this one? 70 degrees, right? So it can be like that. And I know I said 30 plus 20, 50, and that angle's obtuse, but I was just throwing numbers out there. Okay. Consider the picture to the right. Now there's two different problems here. Realize they do not go with each other. So once you do one, you just erase it and do the other one. All right, so this one says, if the measure of angle WXY 
is 37. So go ahead, pause the video, try to label that problem on your own. So you should have notes already printed notability. If you don't, pause the video and do that. And then try to just try A on your own, 1A, and come back, check your answer. All right, WXY, this angle right here is 37 degrees. Then they also said YXZ. So YXZ, this angle right here is 51 degrees. And the question is find WXZ. So WXZ is the whole thing. I just have to add those together. 37 plus 51 is 88 degrees. Okay. All right, the very next one, B. So you're not using this information anymore, so you can just erase it. All right, it says that WXY, WXY, this angle right here is 22 degrees. So notice I was tracing them for your benefit. Um, WXZ, 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 the whole thing is 100 degrees. And the question is find, or that's not a question, but the, what they want you to do is find y, x, z. y, x, z is this angle. So we're going to do 100 minus 22. So the measure of angle y, x, z is 78 degrees. Okay. All right, next one, it says A is in the interior of RST. If the measure of angle TSA is 33 degrees and the measure of angle TSR is 59 degrees, what's the measure of angle ASR? Okay. All right, well, first off, here's what people do wrong. They're like, well, I'm just going to add them. Okay, but how do you know it is... I gave you this and this, and you're trying to find this. What if I gave you this and this, and you're trying to find this? So you have to draw it to figure it out, okay? So we're going to start by drawing this. We're going to start by drawing angle TSR, sorry, RST. I like to draw an obtuse angle because it gives me more room, okay? All right, so if you look right here, this is my vertex S, so that has to go there. And then one of these points is R, and one of these points is T. It doesn't matter if those two are switched, Okay, it says A, A right there, remember when it's written like that is just a point. So there's a point A, draw it anywhere. I would draw it not like completely in the middle because then you might think that they're exactly the same. Is in the interior. All right, next thing it says is the measure of angle TSA. Oh, I forgot to label this A. All right, so now if you look at TSA, that's not drawn yet. So that means that you have to draw a ray going through SA so TSA exists. That's 33 degrees. TSR, TSR, the whole thing. So watch how I label the whole thing. The whole angle is 59 degrees. Okay? And it's find ASR, which is this one right here. All right, so I'm going to subtract those two. 59 minus 33. And I get the measure of angle ASR is 26 degrees. Okay. All right, next we have to talk about what an angle bisector is. Okay. So I'm going to start drawing. Here's an angle, ABC. Am I bisecting it right now? Did I bisect it? The answer is no, because if I were to bisect it, this angle and this angle right here would have to be the same size. So first off, when I draw it, I want to draw it like it is cutting it right down the middle. So if you hold your pen, realize that you can get a straight line and then you can move it. So I'm going to say like rightish there. I'm also going to put a point on this. I'm going to put D right there. Okay. So now it looks like they're equal, but I want to show that the angles are equal. So to show that the angles are equal, I'm going to give them, I'm not going to give them tick marks like segments, I'm going to give them congruency marks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a marking here, and then I'm going to give this angle the exact same marking. 
So now that I know that they have the exact same markings, I know they're congruent. You could put tick marks on that. There's a tick mark right there. So now those two angles are congruent, right? But if I backtrack and go like this, these two angles are two different sizes, okay? So you want to have them labeled. So what is my bisector, my seg or my angle bisector? It's a ray, or it can be a segment. That cuts an angle or divides an angle. That's my shorthand way of writing angle. Into two congruent angles. Remember, congruent means equal. That's angles shortcut. So in this particular diagram, ray BD is my angle bisector. Okay, one more example, or sorry, not one more example, one example like this. Notice this is angle bisector and angle bisector. They're not exactly the same, so please stick around for both to make sure you see both. Okay, if you stop the video too early, you might have a problem when you get to a problem like the last one. All right, so this one says RT is an angle bisector of angle SRN. So first off, look at the diagram. Now, does the diagram telling us right now that that's being bisected? No. So since it says, I see a vocab word here, angle bisector, I'm going to mark my two congruent angles. Okay. Now I'll label SRT is 2x plus 3. SRN, SRN, that's the whole thing, is 5x minus 6. Find the measure of angle RSN. So remember, first things first, we have to find X before we can find anything else. So my first question is, is can I set this equal to this? Absolutely not. Is this angle right here the same size as the whole thing? Absolutely not, okay? So then my next question I should be asking myself if I can't do that is, do I know what this is? Well, I don't know what it is exactly, but I know it's the same as that other angle over there, so I can label it 2X plus 3. Okay, so now I need to know if I can write an equation to solve for x. The answer is yes. Please realize to make this simple on yourself just to think about it, if this was instead, I would say this is 25 plus 25 equals 50. So these two must add to give me the whole thing. So that's my equation I'm going to write to solve for x. 2x plus 3 plus 2x plus 3 is equal to 5x minus 6. All right, left-hand side, are there any like terms? The answer is yes. There's a 2x and a 2x, so that's 4x. Any more like terms? Yes. There's a 3 and a 3, so that's 6. Equals. All right, right side, any like terms? No, so I'm going to leave it as 5x minus 6. Now I have x's on both sides, so I need to balance my equation. There's more on the right side, so I'm going to get rid of the 4x on the left side. 6 equals x minus 6. Oops, x minus 6. And finally, I'm going to get x by itself by adding 6 to both sides. So now I know x is 12. Now that I solve for x, I can find what they actually asked me for. So if you look to see what they asked you for, they asked you for srn. So I'm going to trace srn so I know what it is. It's the whole thing, right? So I'm plugging into this one. So I'm going to do 5 times 12 minus 6. 5 times 12 is 60. 60 minus 6 is 54. So the measure of angle S, R, N is 54 degrees. Okay. The very last one, RT is an angle bisector. So it told me that these two are equal again. If this was not here, this problem would not be possible just so you realize it, okay? So if they didn't tell me this, then I probably couldn't do anything unless they gave me this, this, and the whole thing, okay? All right, so next it says SRT, SRT is 2X plus 3. TRN is 5X minus 6, okay? So let me reiterate what I just said. If they did not give me that sentence, then I would not have... 
that those two pieces are equal. And I would be like, not possible. But I do have that sentence. I do know that these two are equal. So I can set them equal to each other. And do 2x plus 3 is equal to 5x minus 6. No like terms on the left side. No like terms on the right side. I'm going to balance my x's by subtracting 2x from both sides. 3 equals 3x minus 6. Add 6 to both sides. 9 equals 3x. Divide by 3. x is 3. All right, now, once again, I didn't ask you for x. I asked you for, oops, I asked you for srn. So let's highlight what srn is, the whole thing. Okay, the whole thing's not labeled, but realize you could plug in 3 here, and you can plug in 3 here and figure out what those are first. 2 times 3 plus 3 is 9 degrees. So this angle is 9 degrees. 5 times 3 minus 6 is also 9 degrees. It better be. We said they were the same. So the whole thing, 9 plus 9, 18 degrees. The measure of angle SRN is 18 degrees. All right, please evaluate how you feel about naming angles like obtuse, acute, right, straight. Then evaluate how you feel about the angle addition postulate. So angle addition postulate is... This angle plus this angle equals the whole thing. All right, that's it. Go ahead and get started on the next homework. So go ahead and get started on the homework. And then when you're done with that, you can start your next video and your next homework.